you're a beginner golfer, it can be pretty overwhelming knowing what to do when you first get out on the golf course. So today we're going to be running you through 13 things every beginner needs to know when they first start playing golf. How do you actually start your round of golf? You start the hole from something called the tee box and we have specific tee markers that are laid out so each day there'll be different colours that you can set up from. The important thing is to make sure your ball is behind the line at the front of these markers so to make sure your ball is in play. Then all you have to do is put your ball down and get the hole under it. What happens if you hit it offline and you can't find your golf ball? Well you have to actually go back to where you played your previous shot from and go again. Now this is called the stroke and distance rule. So if you've driven it here in the rough and you can't find it, you go back to the tee, which counts as one shot, and then you hit again. So in effect, your next shot you're hitting is shot number three. You're playing three off the tee and then that ball is now back in play. So when you've got your ball on the green, where should you be putting your golf bag? Well, really, we don't want to leave our bag somewhere in the line of play for the group behind. And we also don't want to put it somewhere where we have to walk and get it and then go away to the next tee because we're going to be slowing down play. So if you can, always try to put your bag between the pin and the next tee. So you can just walk off, get your bag and head on to the next hole. Now, once you've got your ball on the green, what do you do with the flag? Well, you actually have a few different options. You can leave it in and just continue to play. If you prefer to put without it in, you can also take it out. Now, if you're a long way away and you want it out, but you can't really see where the hole is, you can get someone to attend it. But if you do this, they do need to take the pin out before the ball gets there. So three options, pick which one you fancy and then get on with your putt. Oh, robbed. When you get to each shot, how do you know whose turn it is to go? Well, on the tee box, traditionally, the person who had the lowest score on the last hole would go first. But in more modern times, we go for ready golf. So basically, whoever's ready to hit just gets on the tee and goes. Now, then when we get down into the fairway, typically the person who is furthest away from the hole will hit their shot next. But again, you can be very flexible on this within your group. And if you're ready and someone else is still picking what club to hit or hasn't got to their ball, you can just go ahead and hit. Now for the majority of the round, we play the ball as it lies. So wherever the ball finishes on the court, we'll hit it from there. But there is one exception and that is on the tee box. So here, if you choose, you can put your ball on a tee peg and hit your shot from there. This is obviously especially helpful in terms of woods and drive if you want to tee it up higher, but you can do this with your irons as well. So when can you tee it up? Basically just when you're on the tee box. Now, when you hit your shots into the green, if you get enough height and power, a lot of times you can create a pitch mark in the green. So it's really good etiquette to make sure you're repairing this. Now, you can do this with a pitch fork or you can just use a tee peg. And this just means you're leaving the green nice and smooth for the golfers that come after. Now, once you've started each hole, in general, you have to play the ball as it lies. But on the green, you are actually allowed to mark and clean your ball. So it's always worth having a tee peg or a ball marker at hand, which allows you to just mark this clean any mud on it and you can also line this up to help you with your next shot. Now it's important to note you can only do this if you're on the green. If you're on the fringe you can't so just make sure to double check before you mark your golf ball. How many clubs can you have in your golf bag? Might sound like a silly question but there is actually a limit so you can only carry a maximum of 14 clubs in here. You can opt to carry less if you want to, but you can't go over that 14 mark. If you did in a competition, you would incur quite a few penalty shots. So make sure you count your clubs before you're out. What happens if your ball ends up on the green, but not of the hole you're playing? Well, actually in this circumstance, you get a free drop. Obviously we don't want to hit full shots off the green surface because we'd ruin it. So in this case, we're just going to pick it up and find our nearest point of relief that's not on the putting surface and take a drop. Now, it's important to know, if you're taking a drop, you want to do it from knee height. And now your ball's back in play. Now, if you happen to hit it over here and you are on the wrong fairway, that's fine. In any other area, you can continue to hit your shot back onto your hole. It's just if you're on the wrong green that you need to take a drop off. If you're going out for a game of golf with your mates, how many of you can play together at once? Yes, there is a rule for this. I know it might seem absurd, but it, is that even a word? Yeah. I know it might seem. 
I know that might seem crazy, but it's just to make sure that it doesn't get too slow out on the golf course for the rest of the players. So you're limited to four people in your group if you want to go out and play. If you are in a four ball and there's loads of maybe ones or twos behind you and it gets really slow, the correct etiquette is to let those people through. So if they're getting really close behind you and you're holding them up, just step to the side of the hole, turn around and acknowledge you want them to come through. Then they can play through and they can rush off and you can carry on at your own pace.